Hello and welcome back to Craft D&D. Today I am going to be discussing how I assemble a module or how I assemble a session for play. How I'm going to go through that module, pick out the elements that I want, and uh, then uh, put them into some kind of a quick one sheet that I can use while I'm at the gaming table. Uh, what I'm starting to go through here is against the Cult of the Reptile God. Um, it is a 1E module, an AD&D 1E module. Uh, you can find it on Drive Through RPG for like five dollars. Uh, I was watching eBay for a while, but uh, this is definitely the better way to go, and I highly recommend it. Five dollars. It's uh, and, and it's yours. You can print it out. You can you can put it in a binder like I did, and it's pay, pay, if a page gets ruined, you just print it out again. No big deal. So that's uh, for those old modules. It's definitely the way to uh, find them. Um, over here on this side, I do have some session notes that I'm going to be kind of going through. But uh, before I even start writing session notes, when I get a new module, I just kind of like leaf through it real quick. I make note of NPCs. I make note of uh, areas. I make note of, obviously, of the general plot. But I don't necessarily use all of it. I think uh, many, of, many of you out there, too, probably kind of don't follow the plot verbatim unless you're like brand new at uh at doing this you kind of tailor what you're doing towards your players a little bit or at least try to which is kind of my philosophy i mean i really try to give the players what they want is is, is the uh, old saying and uh or maybe it's a newer saying i don't know but uh but anyway, I kind of try to tailor it so the story is good for them, too. So it's not just a, hey, I showed up, I rolled some dice, and I went home. And what was that all about anyway? But the pizza was good. So try, try to avoid those scenarios. Although I've definitely had my fair share of those scenarios where um, I think people showed up, played the game, and went, huh, well, I could have uh, gotten those four hours back. That would have been great. Or, whatever time it, it, it was but uh anyway so kind of going through here we kind of leaf through like i said here take a look at like the map take a look at any of the elements in the in their um anything in box text take a look at that take a look at uh um here's a uh, some kind of a wizard he's got some spells or maybe he's a druid or cleric or something like that. We need to read that a little bit closer to find out who that is. Uh, it's Dorian. It's not one of the uh, the uh, NPCs that I have focused on yet. I know he's uh, he and uh, his companion are a couple of elves that are doing some watching and monitoring. I'm sure they're going to come up, but I didn't want to bring them in right away. So they're going to be they're going to be off hiding, even if uh, even if the PCs were to visit the, their house. They won't be home. They're going to be out somewhere doing something. Uh, the neat thing about this is it's got kind of some uh, various... It's kind of mystery feel to it, of course, because it's got that uh, old school, you, know, you arrive and not quite sure what's going on. Um, there's a tie-in with the characters now. They've been on this boat that they got from this island that was sinking, and... Uh, Basically, they got on the boat. The boat's not in good shape. They've been trying to bail it and stuff like that. One of the the NPC who's with them, she's actually from this uh, this island that they're headed to. Uh, she's been a while since she's been home, and she has no idea ab about these cultists. Now, I fully expect the characters, the uh, the uh, players, um, to suspect her and. So there should be something interesting there um, that she probably is leading, you know, they'll think she's leading them to a trap and I'll definitely hint at that. I'm not going to ever, ever lead them in that direction because that would not be true. But I'm going to offer that as kind of a you know, just, uh, subliminal suggestion, we'll say, at, at some point. Uh, just so one of them will kind of pick up on it and kind of look at her suspiciously. But, uh, so yeah, so what I do, I kind of go through there, and then I create basically just a little one sheet, and I'm going to get this on the computer so it's a little bit easier to see, I think, because uh, I do print this out right on the computer, so it's, uh, it's very easy to, to see and get to, and this is actually my one from last time anyway, 
So now we're going to switch over to the computer and take a look at this in a little bit easier to read format. All right, as you can see here, I've been, uh, I have my actual notes here in OneNote. Um, very easy program to use. Uh, comes with Windows 10. I think it, it comes with all versions of Windows 10. So if you have Windows 10, you actually have OneNote available. Uh, it's very nice. You can set up a bunch of little ta uh, tabs and then sheets and pages underneath each of the tabs. And you can nest those sheets and pages in the tabs and so forth. What I'm using here is actually a little bit older version. Uh, I have an older version of Microsoft Office. It uh, comes with a a version of OneNote that is a uh, standalone version, which I prefer, because then I don't have to sync everything up to the Microsoft Cloud. I can save it locally. But like I said, I think every version of Windows 10 does have OneNote. So it's very handy to or kind of organize everything. And as you can see, I have a session notes tab. And then I have a page for each of my session notes. So um, here, back here, this would have been the May's 30th game. Uh, this is in the last game we played. And then there, and then we'll look at the session notes for the upcoming game. Um, so just kind of a quick overview here. I usually have like a little one line in, in the film industry or the screenwriting industry. They call it the elevator pitch or in the novel writing industry, it's the elevator pitch. It's just a one, one or two sentences giving a really broad strokes of what you think might happen in the in the campaign at least is what you're prepared for for that next session so here they uh the the, the party uh got off of ventress island on their small craft uh they're going to encounter a couple of different uh encounters while they're uh, uh, rowing this this craft going to find some surviving orcs that uh, escape the island on a and actually i changed this from a ship to a raft and they're going to get attacked by some Sahagin. Um, they don't have a sail. Uh, they were forced to use their oars. And that's basically it. And then from there, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I do know there's some plot points that I'm going to prepare for. Uh, I'm going to prepare for the in, the encounter with the orcs. I'm going to prepare for the, the Sahagin, uh, possible sinking ship, uh, sighting Ventress Island if they get that far. And then I want to find out from the 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 uh, players where they're going to go next and then I put a note in there to make sure I hand out experience points because it's a weakness of mine and I often forget to do it until next session so guess what I uh, forgot to hand out experience points at the end of this session too despite the note I should like put it in red or something but uh and so for the like, the counters on the on the ship I made a couple notes myself they were not going to be hostile um, they just wanted to get home. They'll defend themselves, but uh, that's it. Uh, they were they they were not intended to be hostile. The Sahagin are pirates, and they are hostile. And they're looking to capture prizes and food, and they consider the PCs to be food. Uh, they will attack on sight, and then I said there's some kind of trick might work against them. Uh, sinking ship depends upon what happens if there's some battle. Uh, the swimming rules, no heavy armor. It's just it's just some extra little notes to myself. No heavy armor, leather, padded. Difficult. They could only carry a dagger between their teeth. So if they end up losing their ship, they're going to be in really, really sorry state. Uh, they'll get to Ventress Island, hopefully. Either they'll row up or maybe they might get washed up on the island, depending upon the fight, depending upon how well that goes. Or they might get on some other island, depending upon what they do. Uh, but Melisana, she's that NPC who's from Ventress Island. She just wants to go home. Her her big motivation when she gets there, she just wants to go home. Uh, because it's been uh, several months. Uh, I think I established like eight months or so since she was last there. Just enough time for this cult to move in and kind of take over. Um, There are some... Tavern Tales and Rumors, the old uh, gold box uh, uh, D&D &D games, those old gold box TSR games always had Tavern Tales, and I always kind of, that's kind of when I started to incorporate them into the game a little bit. And if they're highlighted in yellow, that means that they've learned them. If they're highlighted in white, they're not. So they've learned that there are orc tribes in the area, with the rotting eye clan being the most feared. 
Um, the village of Orlane on Ventress Island is no longer accepting outsiders. The PCs learned this from the orcs, and they think it only applies to orcs. They don't realize it's going to apply to them, too. Uh, Sahagan pirates are a menace. Um, they eat their captives. And the PCs might have figured this out because they did watch the Sahagan eat an orc. Or actually, they found the remains of the orc after the Sahagan apparently ate ate it. Um, they were they were hiding in a cave when that happened off screen for them. Uh, human pirates and slavers are common in the area; should be avoided. They know this because they were all. That's how the adventure originally started: is they had all been captured to be taken as um, slaves on this ship, but the ship went aground on this island and it sunk, and they were basically the only survivors. The locations, uh, the Corin Archipelago and Ventress Island, um, which are two places that I took directly from the original module that we were playing. Uh, so... And that's just the names. And actually, the corn art, this is just, I literally took the name, and I have no idea what the rest of it looks like. I'm going to make it up as I go. Uh, Ventress Island was a cool name, and I grabbed it right away because of this Melisana. Um, she was from there, and she told them about it, you know, after they were washed ashore and so forth from the uh, shipwreck originally. So that's, that kind of name was kind of stuck with it. Uh, various NPCs, uh, the one NPC that they, that they discovered who, and they learned his name would be this Vertog. The rest of these, uh, orc names I can still use for other orcs if I don't want them. They didn't talk to any Sahagan, uh, they avoided them wisely. So they didn't, didn't look, I didn't use any of these Sahagan names and I just traded these off of the, uh, fantasy name generator website. I believe it was. So, in I can just reuse this list until I run out of it, then I'll just create some more. And I've kind of fleshed out a little bit more information about this Melisana. She's the daughter of a merchant. Uh, she's an acolyte of Marika, or Marika. Uh, she can cast Cure Light Wounds once a day, but not in combat. She needs time to really focus and think about it. So, um... Uh, she was with the Cavs, she was with the PCs, that's more of a note for myself, wants to go home to Ventress Island in case I were to suddenly forget why she's with them. I've got that. And if I need it, or have, have the, or the orc stat block, just a quick little note, plus what, where to go find the full listing. And the same with the Sahagan, just quick notes, and then where to go find the, the full listing, should I need it. Um, then I'll do like any special notes that I'm not familiar with or need to kind of brush up on or need some serious crib notes for. And of course, ship combat. And I did a whole video on ship combat. Um, it's on Dungeon Master Guide, page 53 to 55 of the uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And I decided they both had galleys. Uh, you know, I just kind of... Uh, they were both kind of in really bad shape. There, there are two vessels that they had, so they were kind of the same vessel, but I decided they were both going to be using these galley stats, even though they weren't truly galleys, but uh, they were 30 feet long, 8 feet wide, so they were very long and narrow boats that they, that they had. And like I said, the orcs ended up with more of a raft, less of a galley, but more and more of a raft, just how the scenario went. The Sahagan had a much better ship. They also had a galley, but they had a much larger galley. Their, their galley was more on the 60 feet by 15 feet. They just had a much bigger galley. Um, but I would have used the same stats. Otherwise, had they decided to fight them, and I kind of at one point thought that they might ally a little bit with the orcs and then fight with the orcs against the, the Sahagan, in which case they might have had a chance. Uh, but instead, the uh, PCs decided to attack the orcs on site. Well, they, they talked with them just a little bit, and then one of them just shot at the orcs. So the orcs tried to flee, and the PCs chased them and kept shooting at them. So I was like, screw it, and I brought the Sahagan in and kind of cut them off, and the PCs turned tail and ran. And so I let them get behind this island, but then they had to spend the night 
in this tiny little cave that they managed to get into. And, uh, well, the Sahagan made camp right on that island. So they had a miserable night, the, uh, the uh, characters did, just because the Sahagan were all camped there right above them. So they didn't dare make a noise lest a, a Sahagan, um, noticed them. And one of them did kind of get brave and swim out a little bit to try to check things out. But of course, swimming, you can't, so once again, with the swimming rules, dagger clench between the teeth and, no armor or anything, so kind of swim out, look around, see the ship, see the guards, see all the lights, campfires, and swam back, and that was that was pretty much it. Um, that's also when he encountered the uh, the uh, bones of one of the orcs, so he could uh, they could assume that it, that it was eaten, but uh, they really don't know what happened to with that. Uh, so yeah, there's just the special notes there. Treasure, any treasure that they might have found, they didn't find any. And then any notes down here, just kind of scratch notes, experience, significant PC choice, anything like that, I will just kind of put down here. Either I'll write it down on a piece of paper or if I'm using, using the laptop or whatever else, I can, I can type it in or I can come back and type it in later. This is probably what I would not typically do. Uh, in this case, I just reminded myself that the PCs decided to attack the, the raft. They learned the name of Vertog, and I kind of put some brief notes in here. That way, six months, a year from now, when this comes back around to bite them in the butt, and they'll go, oh, they were mean to us right away. I can pull out this note and go, no, nope, they greeted you in a friendly manner. Uh, they fled, and you continued to shoot arrows at them and gave chase. Uh, the orcs focused on fleeing. They occasionally returned fire, but for the most part, they was only the, I only had the, the leader uh, of the orcs uh, returning fire. Everybody else was focusing on getting their craft out of there. Uh, then I had the Sahagan appear and so forth. Uh, just kind of just some general notes to myself so that later on I know what's going on. But I now have a possible another recurring character. Um, I have this my, would be my second re possible recurring character to uh, choose from. Uh, they, they in the first module they th they uh, got double crossed, we'll say, by this old guy, and they decided to just shove him in a hole. Uh, that uh, they knew would lead uh, out into the ocean. Um, so he's a possible uh, reoccurring enemy. Or this guy could be a possible recurring enemy because he might want to seek revenge for the murder of his companions uh, because of the PCs. Um, so that's kind of how I do a session like that. Now for like this upcoming session, I've already kind of went through it. Once again, I have that elevator pitch, a um, little bit longer, this one, because um, I'm not sure which direction the PCs are kind of going to go. Uh, they're going to arrive at, at Ventress Island. Uh, I'm going to be introducing a new character. I have another player. I have a new player, and another player had to step away for a while, so there's going to be um, one of the, the player who's stepping away. His character is actually going to become a uh, kidnapping victim as quickly as possible of the uh, cult, and they're going to be, be holding him, so that'll kind of give the entire party a reason to go after the cult, because one of their uh, companions has been taken, one of their party members has been taken, and out at sea, before they actually set foot on Ventress Island, I'm going to have them encounter the new uh, player, just so that we can just establish right away he's not from Ventress Island, he doesn't know anything about Ventress Island, He's just as new to the place as you are, so that there doesn't have to be a, well, you're from Ventress Island, uh, tell us about all of the, that's what Malasan is for, and then the, the new player has no idea about about Ventress Island, so I'm not going to task them with uh, suddenly knowing a bunch about a, this, uh, th this, this place. Uh, then I have a bunch of notes here. Uh, just And this really isn't part of the pitch. It's more of a note to myself about how the cult took over the island. Um, they started right after Melisana left on her buying trip. Um, her dad, like I said, was a merchant, and she was working for him, with him. It doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, the cult gained foothold while she was gone. Uh, they find people, even people that she know, are very cold, distrustful, uh, standoffish. Um, like I said, the one PC disappears. 
If the PCs want their ship fixed, it's going to cost way too much to do it. Otherwise, they could sell it. Um, uh, when they go to, uh, um, not this should not be Burbles. This should be uh, uh, Melisana. So I'm going to fix that right now. Because uh, she is the NPC who is with them, and Merble is the NPC, or the PC, who has been kidnapped. When they go to Melisana's home, it's been just, it's been deserted. Uh, so, it's just kind of the, all of the plot points that I'm going to be expecting some of the NPCs that they might encounter, and, and their, and their reaction. Once again, I have the Tavern Tales and Rumors, and what's going to happen with that. So I have various locations around the island that I think might be significant. And this is all from the module, so I just kind of have brief notes, what page to go look on to, you know, for those to quickly reference something. Um, but uh, overall, it's just kind of some brief notes there. Uh, the NPCs that they might encounter with some brief notes with them. Uh, they might encounter more orcs. So I, you put down some of the names that uh, hadn't hadn't been used yet, and actually they will encounter more orcs. Because, uh, the orcs that they encountered at the sea, you know, out at sea did mention that they were on Ventress Island and they were chased away, but a few of them were actually ca captured and scheduled to be, uh, killed. And they're gonna get a clue there, I hope, that, uh, because the, uh, Ventress Island people are gonna call them a massive raiding party, and obviously the PCs encountered them out at sea, and they know the craft that they were in, they, they know that they were survivors from the same island that they just uh, that just sunk uh, behind them. Uh, the PCs basically spent a few days on a on a smaller island recovering, and so that gave the orcs enough time. Then they sailed over to that island, and so I mean it's uh, there really wasn't enough time for the orcs to have amassed a big raiding party. So hopefully the PCs pick up on that that uh, that the people here are lying. Um, Without having to be too force fed. Uh, they do find, uh, Ma or encounter Melisana's grandmother who is going to help them. Um, oh, so she's, uh, uh, very paranoid and frightened. And, uh, uh, she, and of course she discovers that her, her own father is missing. Um, special rules to remember don't have any yet. Some monsters that they might encounter they might, might encounter orcs they might encounter troglodytes so they might, might encounter some skeletons we'll see that's about how that all works out so i've got the stats there and if they encounter something else i just grab the monster manual and uh, look it up real quick but for the most part these are what i would expect that they would come across uh these are what, what i would be planning for anyway and treasure and anything significant like that so that's kind of how i go through and just plan a session um Plan a new session for, so this is for the upcoming one, uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, the one from a couple of weeks ago, uh, was, would have been the one that we looked at right away. But the other thing I do here when I'm kind of planning this is like just have some special notes for, say, Melisana. Uh, just a few little quick notes that anything that kind of comes up in the significance that I say that becomes a plot point goes in here. Otherwise, it's not real. If, it, if it's not real important, I don't bother with it. Uh, I gotta never expect her to get into combat, so I don't have combat stats for her. If I did, if she did get into combat, then she would be a, probably a zero level. So I'm just I'd do it as a zero level um, encounter. Uh, other notes that might be important. Uh, um, so this is the guy that they threw down the hole. But the, uh, the orc that they, end, that, that they encountered who might be, um, hate them now. He, he does hate them now. So if they encounter him again, he's not going to be happy about it. Uh, because the Sahagan did eat his companions and forced him to watch. He got away somehow. Uh, they were saving him as, you know, their final dessert or something, but he did get away. So now he wants revenge on the PCs. So that'll be interesting when that all comes up. So that is how I go through and set up a new session for a upcoming game. And like I said, the big thing about the using it on OneNote, you put your notes in there. Even if you write them out, just type them in there later. That way you can kind of review stuff later. Um, it's kind of handy. I have like quick rules and tables that I, you know, kind of 
take a picture and throw in there real quick if I if I need to reference them or reference them a lot. Maps, either maps I might find on the internet or draw myself, whatever. Um, more more notes on the PCs, uh, region notes, quick notes, uh, the bestiary. As I said, as I do those. Uh, um, these things here, I'll copy and paste them out into the bestiary up there, just so I can just copy and paste them out again, so I don't have to type them, you know, over and over and over again. But probably the biggest, most important, or the you most thing I use the most here is just the session notes here, with just uh, the notes from the sessions and the uh, notes on my NPCs are probably what I hit the most.